Hey, what's going on guys? It's me, Aiden, from Cartoon Apocalypse, and today, the new episode of Miraculous Ladybug called Sandboy has just aired, and oh man, this episode was as good as I was anticipating. Now, obviously, there are major spoilers, so if you haven't seen the episode yet, go watch it. Uh, but for those of you who have watched it and want an analysis, let's go ahead and talk about it. Now, instead of giving you like a frame-by-frame -frame analysis describing what happened in the episode and things like that, I'm mainly just going to skip to the points or like the new facts that we learned in this episode because there was a lot of things that we learned. This was a huge plot episode. So the first thing I thought I'd mention is just, you know, the very, like, it's not anything too big, but just the, the very beginning sequence, it was different when they described it on the San Diego Comic-Con panel uh, just from what we see here, which, I mean, it's not like it changes the story or anything, it was just a little bit of the wording was different, so, I mean, I guess that was kind of cool to see, but, uh, th that's interesting. And then, I mean, for those of you who didn't know, the Kwame's birthday is, like, once every several hundreds of human years, so this is very important for them. And so, <laughs> pretty much, there's this huge thing going on uh, that, uh, Plague Tiki and, um, Waze have planned, as far as the miracle box and trying to get a message out to Nuru. All right, so moving along to the next thing that we learn, we learn that the master of like the individual miraculouses really have a lot of control over the miraculous. As we saw before, we saw Marinette like Tiki was like, "So you'll let me go," and like pretty much saying that she had to ask permission for Marinette to let her go. So that pretty much allows the owner of the Miraculous a lot of power. And we saw that uh, Mr. Agrest was able to like shut Nuru's mouth, which means that, that the Miraculous owners have a lot more power over the Miraculous is than we thought. So this is very, very like, I, I don't know. It's not like that it might come in handy later in the future, but it's just very interesting to learn. Now the next thing we learn is that Hawk Moth actually, his Miraculous actually glows when somebody is feeling a negative emotion, which is very interesting. Now we know how he knows, like, who's having a negative emotion and then, like, what kind of emotion it is. So it's just very interesting to see that that's how it works. And, I, I mean, like I said, this might come useful in the future, but this is just good information to have. Now the next thing we learned is that every single time a Kwame comes back into the Miracle Box from the overworld, or from Earth I guess, they have to bring, or it's a tradition to bring something from their previous world. So that's why there was so much stuff just lying around, just because that's what people have brought, that's what the Kwame's brought back in. So we see just all sorts of just random stuff, and that's why there was repeats of things that we may have seen in the show, and just stuff that's in the Miracle Box, because... Like I just said, they bring stuff back. So Tiki decided to bring a marker. So the Kwamis were pretty cool. And speaking of the Kwamis, there was a lot of them. There were so many Kwamis. I'll probably have to make a whole other video just on the Kwamis. But just the fact that we get to see so many new Kwamis and so many new voices is super cool. And the fact that they hired a bunch of voice actors to do the voices. Now we've only seen the voices of a couple Kwamis but they still had to hire a voice actor or actress for that. So that means that we will probably be seeing these Kwamis in the future with that voice actor returning, and who knows, maybe not, but it's, it was very interesting to see. Now the next thing we learned is that the Kwamis aren't actually allowed to say their like owner's name when they're around other Kwamis, and that's just simply to keep their identity. Now obviously, Tiki and uh, Plague, they know who each of their owners are, but, I mean, just, I mean, it, I guess it just adds another layer of protection just for every other Kwame. So, it's super interesting to see. Now, the next thing that we kind of learn is that Marinette's worst nightmare is Adrian, like, kind of saying that he's going to date Chloe and things like that. So, I mean, nothing that we couldn't have guessed, but uh, that, that was pretty interesting. Now, the next thing that we learn is that the Kwamis have to all sing in unison to actually just, like, send out the message to just add like new roof in this example and they even had to bring in ways because just simply of the fact that they needed more power and this was just very interesting to see it was a very cool concept um so i can't wait to see more of this type of episode because the mo the past like episodes of miraculous have been very plot related so this is just amazing and i love it 
Now the next thing that we learn is that the, like the serpent miraculous is actually named Sass, or S A S S. So that's pretty cool to learn. Now the next thing that we learn is that Master Fu's worst nightmare are like ghosts of miraculous, or kind of just kind of like saying that he lost the miraculous and that it was his fault, which we could have assumed. He f he feels like it's his uh, duty now to protect the miraculous because he lost two of them on accident of course but we don't exactly know what or how he did but that's something that we probably will be learning in the future now the next thing that we learn is that when the Kwamis actually sent out the message it actually got relayed to Hawk Moth now if you watched my uh, promo analysis on this I was actually correct Hawk Moth was making like an R kinda expression because he was receiving the message which is exactly what I had said and so he received the message, and this whole, like, this one minute, like, clip is the most, in my opinion, like, one of the most important parts and most interesting parts in this entire episode. Hawk Moth gets the message, and he's actually able to communicate with the Kwamis. And the Kwamis are like, alright, let's find out where Hawk Moth is. And then Hawk Moth is like, nope, I'm actually going to be finding you. So then he's the one who starts relaying the message back to the Kwamis and is actually starting to track their location and then the Kwamis are like oh no we have to cut off communication in order to prevent Hawk Moth from finding out their exact location but Hawk Moth does now know the general location of where the Kwamis are it's a very wide location but it's like this is the closest Hawk Moth has ever been to finding out where the Kwame Guardian is now, we also kind of learned that Hawk Moth was, like, the reason why they couldn't communicate with Nuru directly is because Nuru was turned into Hawk Moth, which, you know, Hawk Moth is a whole different person besides Nuru, so Hawk Moth was the one who actually was able to talk, so that's very interesting. So the next thing that we kind of learn, it's not really a thing that we learn, it's just something that's very interesting. Sandboy follows Plague, which is very interesting because... Plague almost got like his identity or who Adrian was like almost revealed so that was very interesting to see this is the closest Hawk Moth has ever gotten to finding out who Ladybug and Catnoo are are now the next thing that we learn is pretty much Ladybug's worst nightmare is not being able to be Ladybug pretty much because all of her powers were taken away now Count Noir's worst nightmare was an evil Ladybug who <laughs> pretty much hates him now we don't exactly learn who Sandboy actually is, it's just a kid who had a nightmare. And I had speculated that this was actually someone who's related to Nino, or someone who was a good friend of Nino. Now we don't actually know if that's true or not. I mean, I don't think it's that important to the story. If, if it was, then they would have said so. But, I mean, we don't really know who this kid is. So then the last thing that we kind of learn, or not really the last thing, we have like two more things. The, la the second to last thing is that Plague secretly really likes Adrian, and he kind of shows it in this episode, and uh, I, I mean secretly loves him. So um, that's very interesting to see that they actually kind of connected and bonded in this episode. That was very cool to see. Now the last thing that we really learn is that Hawk Moth knows that there are a lot of Kwamis and that they are very close by, and this is very dangerous. And then he, he hints to using them to create like just using them and he says that he'll have unlimited powers at his disposal and he even says if i have to fight a whole army of superheroes i'll do it so he is very dedicated to do it and that kind of hints to heroes day the last episode or the season finale of season two so i mean we will be seeing a series of heroes try to fight them so we will be seeing all the heroes that we've seen so far as well as queen bee helping to take out hawk moth so this is going to be very interesting so that's really it. That's really all the things that we learn. I'll go into detail in a whole nother video, like on the Kwamis, just on the Kwamis, and just everything else that needs to be a whole separate video. This is kind of just like the basic facts and things like that. So without any further ado, I'm going to end this episode or video here, and I'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye. Wait, wait, I think I've got it.